Hello everybody, Shocking into 1000 with Bonnie for Duty, welcoming you back to an episode of my brilliant diamond hoop lock nuzlocke. Last time, we started off our journey with having only access to using our starter Pokemon Tor Terra until we beat the Heart Home City Gym Leader. And we went all the way... Um, hang on. We went all the way up north to Celestic Town to get the HM move of Surf. Because that was the hindrance that prevented us from challenging the gym leader. And unfortunately for us, we are going to be having a little bit of a hindrance problem with this gym. With only using Torterra. Because... These are the only moves I have to work with. Razor Leaf, Earthquake, Curse, and Leech Seed. I could theoretically use a heart scale to reteach Torterra the move Bite. But this is where the problem lies. There is a move that Torterra can learn at level 45 and unfortunately for me I am nowhere near reaching that level so we're just gonna have to hope for the best because it's time for us to challenge Fantina and speaking of Fantina, I'm going to be loading up her Bulbapedia page so I can keep exact track of what to expect so I don't have any surprises. Well, it's a little, little bit on the loud side. Well, actually, it's loud for me, but it probably might not be loud for the recording because I did realize that with my Yoshi's Woolly World LP, when I wanted you to listen to Claw Daddy Beach's music, you didn't even get to hear anything. And my TV volume upstairs was actually on volume 10. And this is on volume 10 now. So I don't know if you can actually hear it properly or not. So, okay. As far as I recall, I don't even going to bother reading the sign. The correct answer is far right. Far uh, middle. Far left. And then the last one, I think, is middle. I'm not 100% sure. No, it's a uh, right. There you go. <laughs> See? Don't even need to read the signs. I just got it memorized, apart from the last puzzle. Okay. Um, this might not theoretically work out well for me, but I'm going to try. Now, I'm actually going to give myself a lifeline on this. Because I did this challenge last time when I was fighting the steel type gym leader. And now we're doing it against the ghost type gym leader. So, uh, I could have used curse on that case. So, I'm going to do something different. I'm probably going to give myself a lifeline where if I fail this run, I will allow myself to add in 
an extra Pokemon on my team. However, I would not be allowed to use that Pokemon at all until after I beat the next gym leader. But that's only if I fail this gym battle. Some of you probably might think that's actually cheating, but to be honest, do you expect me to have an easy time fighting a Drift Blim with only Razor Leaf and Earthquake as my attacking moves? I wouldn't really think so. Plus, at the moment, it is currently 26 degrees Celsius here, because we're going through an entire week's worth of a heat wave. It's going to be 28 degrees Celsius both tomorrow and Saturday. And then by the time it gets to Sunday, it'll go down to 22, and then it'll go down to 20, and so on. It'll, like, die down bit by bit. Okay, had a feeling he was going to use Will-O-Wisp. Not going to lie, I actually thought that you was going to use Strength Sap. Which, theoretically, I believe that's probably the move that she's going to use next. Right, let's try a Razor Lee, see how much damage we do. Yep, there's the Strength Set. Okay, it didn't exactly do a lot, but then again I am burned, so... Right, let's use a few more curses. So that put me back up to plus three attack, but plus four defense. I'm not going to go overboard with the cursing in this case, because seeing how that she just used hex, which does double damage if I'm burned. Um, I think I'm going to take the liberty, uh, if I have it. Okay, I got a Vorseberry at least, so that's fine. I don't think I have any burn heals. So it would theoretically present a problem for me. Right. Yep, using Will O Wisp again. And will this finish him off? Indeed, it will. Okay, next Pokemon is obviously going to be Gengar. So let's use Leech Seed. Uh oh. Now, this does theoretically put me in Overgrow, but um, I don't want to be in. Danger situation here. I really don't. So... Okay, I have one Hyper Potion. Um... Yeah, I think it's ideal for me to use that. Because I think if I use a Super Potion, it's just going to use Sludge Bomb and get me all the way back down to what it was originally. Well, a little bit.
Though the good thing about having Gengar here is that this is in Generation 4, so it doesn't have Levitate for the ability. It's forced to have Cursed Body. And if it's Cursed Body ability activated, it wouldn't have benefited her at all because I would have just hit with Razor Leaf anyway since her last Pokemon is immune to ground. But I probably bet with Nintendo planning Fantina's team for Bullion Diamond Shining Pearl, as far as I am aware, I bet they were originally planning to have Gengar have the ability Levitate again. So that way the only types they could beat him were Dark, Ghost, and Psychic. Hinting the reason why he was holding a Cold Burberry to weaken super effective Psychic moves. Okay, good, 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 good. I know I could theoretically go for Leech Seed here. But I want to play it safe. I didn't want to use these until I actually saw uh, the Confuse Ray be used. So that way I can cure both the burn and the confusion at the same time. There's the Dazzling Gleam. It's put me in Overgrow. Once again, I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to heal. Because you never know when something major will happen. Okay, now for the Razor Lee, going for the Confuse Ray again. If I hurt myself with Confusion, I'm just going to heal back up again. Good! Okay! We did it! We did it! Not the ideal strategy I do normally in battles, but it was the only thing I could have done. But there we go. We beat Fantina, we got her gym badge, and now the sixth gym leader is in reach. We are closing in on where we lost our first attempt of this Nuzlocke. Because it was after the 6th gym where we lost. So. We can actually put. My team back in. So what I'm going to do now. Put my laptop in front. And not have that pop up. Spin the wheel. What is our new challenge? Actually, let me, um, move forward a bit. There we go. Okay. I am not allowed to EXP grind on wild Pokemon. However... I am allowed to catch Pokemon, but I'm only going to be doing it if it's like Pokemon that I have not obtained yet. So it's like, uh, I see a wild Pokemon that I haven't caught, I will catch it, and that's it. I will not battle them or anything else. I will just leave it as that. I have a bit of my drink because I, I actually did put a drink together so that way I'm not dehydrating since when it comes to hot temperature weather, if it is at least 12 degrees, I'm fine, but if it's above 14 to 15, I feel the heat in seconds.
I do have to be careful not to accidentally knock my bottle over, though. Because I don't want it to, like, fall onto my iPad. I'm not saying it's one of those bottles where the water leaks out the top. Um, but it's more so that I don't want a metallic bottle to interfere with my recording. Right, so let's put my team back in. Let's see, so we'll... We'll put back in Kaza. Let's put in Epona. Uh, let's put back in Martha. Uh, Chopperboard. And Solgrey Tigre. Wilson, you... Actually could be helpful, but I want Epona to level up by fighting trainers. And we did actually skip trainers on Route 212. So, we are going to be going through Route 212 for the majority of the episode to actually... Um, get the experience that we desperately need. Actually, speaking of which, uh, while I'm here, there are some trainers in Route 213 that we can technically battle, but they are pretty high level. So we're not going to risk it. We'll pick up the Mystic Water before I forget. There we go. God, I really am feeling the heat. I know I like saying it's because of the fact that I don't have any windows open. Because obviously I don't want the windows open. In case the hot and humid weather is impacting the wind. Because it can do that sometimes. Where you think the wind is going to be cool and refreshing. But it's actually not. It's going to be like hot and humid. Because it does do that a lot when you are, um, in America, specifically Las Vegas. Because, yeah, I kid you not, I actually did go to Las Vegas on a holiday years ago, back in 2013, during the summertime. Or probably springtime, but still. And it was absolutely boiling hot. Actually, I think I'll turn the volume down now. We'll go for a razor leaf and we should be done. I mean, I know... I think I probably said this in one of my previous recordings back when I did it on the 1st of September, which was Saturday last week. Um, I could theoretically use a heart scale to teach Torterra Woodhammer, but I'd rather not. Because having a recoil move is ideally like a do or die situation. Uh, oh, fiddlesticks. Getting stuck in the mud. Right, I'm going to take the above ground as per usual because... Um... Okay. How do I do it again? It, oh, yeah, it's minus. I keep forget. Whenever you play certain games for so long, you ideally, uh, first impression, have the controls of one game in your head and you completely forget about the controls on the other game. It's like, if you play 
Pokemon Sword and Shield. You are that used to having your C, L, C, R, and A button all correspond in selecting your Pokemon's moves, talking to NPCs, and picking up items. But, in Scarlet and Violet, it doesn't do that. And also, in Scarlet and Violet, if you press the Y button, you load up the town map. But in Sword and Shield, as well as Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, you just load up something called the YCOM. Or, in this game, something that allows you to just join the Union Room. And, honestly, I can't believe I missed with Razor Leaf, but at the same time, Kadabra missing with Kinesis, who's perfectly fine. I probably should switch Torterra out from the lead, actually, because... I think Torterra definitely does need a rest after that gym battle. You know what, let's put Martha in the lead. And if I was actually able to... If I was actually able to find a male Medicham and teach Medicham Fire Punch and Ice Punch, I could actually breed it with Boneri, so that way Boneri would actually have Fire Punch and Ice Punch in his moveset every time I hatch an egg. But then again, it would, it would put my progress of raising his happiness all the way back down to square one. So... For my better benefit, it's probably best for me not to do that. Plus, I think there might be the TM for Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, and Ice Punch in this game. And no, I am not theoretically saying that I'm going to trade Boneri over into Sword and Shield to teach it that way because it'll reset the happiness level again. So, let's see. If I type down Boneri and I go to Pokemon Database. And specifically put up Generation 8 of Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. And I have a look and see, yep, it specifically learns it by breeding. It cannot learn it by TM in this game. Thought I'd have a look. There we go. I'll pick up a bottle of sink. I can use that on Boneri to raise the happiness even further. Uh, got another TM? Oh, yeah. No, he's not toxic. What move is that? Is that blind? Oh, no, it's surf. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's actually have a look at what moves we could teach. So, Boneri to learn Ice Beam, no. Doesn't give already got that sorted out. Thunderbolt, no. Dig, no. 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 If Ponyta was a special attacker, Flamethrower would be a really good move to teach you, but unfortunately you're not. Oh, yeah, Drain Punch. Yeah, that's actually a good move to teach to Martha, actually. Uh, we'll substitute Double Kick. Having a move is probably going to be like a base 60 power because you hit two times guaranteed. To then have it be using a move that's a base 75 power is definitely way better. Payback would be ideal if I teach that to Marchamp, but I'm not. Having Source Dance on um, Torterra would actually be ideal. Snarl, no. No. Substitute, no. Alright, uh, where's that bottle of sink? There it is. We'll give that to Martha. No, do not think this is favoritism because I need Boneri to evolve into Lopini. I literally had Boneri evolve into Lopini 
way earlier than this in the first attempt. I don't even know when it happened, but it definitely did happen at some point. I mean, ideally, I could try and raise up the happiness for Togepi. That is, of course, if I actually caught the Togepi, which I don't think I did. Um, in the Grand Underground. Which, speaking of which, I should actually go in the Grand Underground and see if I can catch a new Pokemon. Someone that will probably ideally help me out. In case if Ponyta might not work out so well. Because Ponyta does evolve in the 40s. And Epona is around in the 20s. And these trainers honestly do not give you any experience. Half the time. So, let's do this. Let's go in the Grand Underground. We'll just go with local communication. I mean, I could do play alone. Because it actually will save the effort of... Um, having to, like, can do all kinds of stuff, really. Right, so... I think this is a desert. Desert-y local. Yeah, rocky. So we got Hippopotas, Graveler, um, an item. Oh, TM4 Carmine. Right, got Geodude. Another Graveler. Nothing else. Okay. Safe to move on. I'm not just going to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in one particular room, because what is ideal with that? Right, let's have a little dig. Okay, four in the wall. Nothing there. Um, bedrock. Oh. Oh, it's just a spear. Well, then again, spears could theoretically work. Oh, hello. Well, we got a fossil. But I do remember we did actually have a crany dose, but I had to release him because... He was in my party at the time when I was doing the challenge of I am not allowed to teach Pokemon TMs. And I taught TMs to uh, Mew and Alakazam. So I had to release two Pokemon, and one of the Pokemon I basically chose to release was Cranidos, which means I'm not allowed to use any more Cranidos. So that Skull Fossil, unfortunately, I cannot revitalize. Okay. Actually, this is... Oh, this is all the one connected point. Okay. I thought it was like a different area <laughs> entirely. Spacious cave. Yeah, that's the most boring one ever. There's Hoot Hoot. And there's Stunky. I think I think I actually will catch a Stunky. And maybe a Hoot Hoot as well. Oh, jeez. Guys, level 40. Oh, come on. Oh, God. Oh, no. Ah. Oh. Sorry, Boneary. Okay, let's uh, switch into Chopperboard. 
And let's use knockoff just to weaken it a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see. We'll use a dusk ball. Because we technically are underground. Got it. Okay, good. And what else is good about that is that I can just evolve Stonky in one level. Yeah, we'll give you a name. Um, oh, God. Actually, yeah, I know. We'll give you the name Stella after the skunk from Over the Hedge. See, mild nature, aftermath for the ability, and you actually had memento the entire time. Okay, let's send you into the box for now. And I'm going to immediately go up. And before I end off the episode... I'm terribly sorry, Martha. But I couldn't keep you alive for the entirety of the run. And let's put Mew in. And there we go. That's where I'm going to have to call an end of this episode, guys. <clears throat> um, everything that's technically found on this route, I will pick up in the next episode. But I will be challenging all of the trainers off camera, okay? So next time on my Brilliant Diamond Hooplock Nuzlocke, You'll be seeing me grabbing all of the items in Route 212 and then making our way to Canale City. See you guys then.